Prior to beginning the activity, please be sure to review the faculty information and disclosure statements, as well as the learning objectives. After listening to the activity, complete the post-test by clicking the Earn Credit link in the episode description. Downloadable slides and resources are also available. The following presentation is copyrighted by Medscape. No use, broadcast, or recording of this presentation or any part thereof is permitted without the written authorization of Medscape. The following presentation is part of a certified educational activity provided by Medscape Education and supported by an educational grant from Behringer Ingelheim. This program is presented by Medscape Education Global. Hello, I'm Mervy Bachelet, Professor of Dermatology at the Paris Cité University and at the St. Louis Hospital in Paris, France. Welcome to this program entitled New Frontiers in Neutrophilic Dermatosis, the role of the IL-36 pathway. Joining me today is Jonathan Barker, who is Professor of Medical Dermatology at the St. John's Institute of Dermatology at King's College London, UK, and Kelsey von Strelen, who is a research scholar in the Department of Dermatology at the uh, Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Thank you. So, GPP uh, is a rare neutrophilic skin disease, which is part of what we could call neutrophilic dermatosis. The key characteristic of GPP disease is the repetition of episodes, usually acute, of generalized steroid pustules caused by neutrophilic and monoclear inflammatory infiltrate in the epidermis, leading to erythema covered by pustules and crust or scales. GPP can occur with or without plaque psoriasis in a given patient and with or without systemic inflammation. Jonathan, what can we say about the unmet needs in GPP? Um, well, thank you for the question, Hervé. I, I think the first thing to say is, as you described uh, just now, um, is that GPP is a very serious disease um, and it must be treated. Uh, we know that there is a mortality associated with GPP um, and so we need treatments that um, are highly effective um, and quick. Now, when I talk about highly effective, I mean it needs to be able to treat the skin signs and symptoms, which often for the patient can be uh, um, expressed as skin pain. Um, it also needs to be able to uh, deal with acute episodes of GPP, as well as chronic episodes of GPP, because we know that there is a huge spectrum with GPP from intermittent acute episodes to almost chronic disease. Um, and thirdly, it needs to be able to deal with the systemic manifestations of the disease, uh, which, um, as you mentioned, can be fever, uh, malaise, arthralgia. So, so these are the unmet needs of the patients, um, and these are the issues that uh, good treatments need to be able to, um, to deal with. Um, as we know, um, at the moment, um, the treatments that we use to treat GPP um, are in essence borrowed from Psoriasis vulgaris, um, and so um, and we use them off we use them off label. So the systemic treatments that we use for Psoriasis vulgaris are the same that we use in GPP, albeit possibly in a different order. So in other words, um, I don't know if to agree agree with me um, that that many patients will use retinoids earlier in the management of GPP than they would, for example, in the management of um, psoriasis uh, vulgaris. But we have to remember that none of these um, treatments um, have really been um, looked at in randomized controlled trials. Um, and so uh, we tend to use them much more empirically um, than we do in, in um, psoriasis uh, vulgaris. Um, and that, in fact, also applies um, I hope you would agree with the biologic treatments that we, we use to treat um, GPP. Um, again, we are borrowing them off-label from psoriasis vulgaris. But again, um, evidence that they are effective um, comes from case reports, um, an open series of, of, of patients. Um, and um, it's my feeling, and I don't know what you two think, is that that, that while they can be effective in GPP, they are not as effective in GPP as they are in psoriasis vulgaris. And I think that might reflect the different pathogenesis of the disease, which I think we're going to be uh, discussing um, in just a moment. Um, and so to put this together, um, yeah, we, we need new treatments. 
um, and we need treatments that can improve the skin. Uh, we need treatments that can improve the um, systemic manifestations and prevent complications. We need treatments that work acutely and we need treatments that work chronically um, and of course um, are safe as well as um, effective. Um, and I believe, and I, I think I would speak for all of us, that, that science is, the, the more that we can understand the science and the pathophysiology um, of uh, GPP, um, so we will be able to develop better treatments. And so, Hervé, if I may, um, can I ask you, uh, what is your view on the immunopathology of GPP? Because I think this is a crucial issue. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, GPP is, um, um, as we, we introduced in the first uh, 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 phase of, the, of this presentation, is dominated by the neutrophilic uh, signature, so to speak. And uh, it's characterized by a deregulated, what we call innate um, skin uh, responses or immune defenses. Um, and this innate immune system is uh, pre-existing to uh, any trigger. Uh, it exists in all organs uh, and in all uh, mammals, including humans. And uh, the alteration in, in this case is through a uh, deregulation, through an upregulation of this inflammatory pathway. Um, and one master driver of this uh, innate uh, immune-driven inflammation is a pathway which is part of the R1 family, which we know for, for long. The pioneering member of the R1 family was L1, alpha and beta. In this case, it's not L1, alpha and beta, which are central in the trophic inflammation in GPP, but it's uh, another member of the L1 family called IL-36. And this is really um, robust evidence across we'll see uh, about the genetic architecture across different genotypes, the R36-driven uh, inflammation is really um, uh, a mainstay of uh, uh, GPP inflammation. And the pathogenesis uh, uh, of this disease led to the, this uh, uh, inclusion uh, in a, a spectrum of so-called auto-inflammatory disease, which are uh, disorders not restricted to the skin, usually resulting from genetic alteration and rather on the monogenic model as opposed by the polygenic model in psoriasis vulgaris. And that dominant uh, genetic model, but Jonathan, you will address that later, is monogenic in this case. And it's part of the definition of the so-called auto-inflammatory disease, deregulation of the innate and systemic immune system, um, a monogenic master driver uh, genetic alteration um, and the rarity of this disease, and well, the adaptive immune system, the B cells, the T cells, they have an accessory role. They don't have uh, 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 a role which is uh, completely neglectable, but it's accessory uh, to the inflammatory, clinically relevant uh, response. Thank you for that, Hervé. Um, could you now tell us, in terms of cytokines, uh, what is the role of IL-36 and neutrophils in GPP pathogenesis? Sure. In this, in the case of uh, of uh, of this uh, deregulation of the IL-36 uh, 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 immune response, you can see on this cartoon that the the, the major source of IL-36 pro-inflammatory cytokines. There are three called IL-36 alpha, beta, and gamma are keratinocytes. Usually it's a system which is very represented in the epithelium, not only the skin, but also the digestive tractus, uh, the bronchial ducts. And uh, you can easily understand why the skin uh, is targeted by the disease, because IL-36 inflammatory cytokines are massively produced by keratinocytes and also to a lesser extent by monocytes. And uh, other cytokines like uh, TNF-alpha, you can see on this cartoon, uh, L17A, uh, IL-1, can induce IL-36 uh, secretion by these cells. And IL-36 um, pro-inflammatory cytokines are secreted as sort of pro-IL-36 or immature IL-36, uh, which is uh, a full-length protein that will be further cleaved by the neutrophil-derived proteases. And indeed, when exposed uh, to the neutrophil, and that's why it's important to inhibit the neutrophil efflux um, uh, in, in, in this disease, uh, because the, the proteases are derived from the neutrophils, will cleave 
the immature form into biologically active mature form of IL-36 that will e expand and stimulate this uh, massive uh, uh, inflammatory response and uh, act back on keratinocytes via the common IL-36 receptor. Um, and uh, they need to be a system of control to limit the intensity and the durability of this response by some antagonist, and you will allude to that, Jonathan, uh, later on. So indeed, the, the, the cleave IL-36 acts back on the keratinocytes, induce uh, IL-36 expression, um, and the expression of neutrophil chemokines uh, will further attract a great number of neutrophils into the skin, releasing their proteases and leading to a sort of vicious circle, vicious loop that uh, basically the inflammatory response is fueling itself and expanding. And we see that uh, in the clinic with this, this very acute, intensive, intense flares. Um, and neutrophil T cells and monocytes recruitment into the epidermis leads then to uh, 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 pustul formation, but the dominant signature again is a neutrophilic one. And the development of GPP involves the uh, hyperactivation of the L36 axis. Uh, it's very clear and based uh, on what we, you will tell us about the uh, genetic architecture, Jonathan, um, and leading to a robust shift um, towards neutrophilic. Uh, chemoattraction or chemotaxis, we call, and the activation of uh, these very neutral fields uh, again uh, releasing their proteases and their inflammatory components. So then, my my question for you, Jonathan, what is the role of the? We, we spoke about the uh, the L thirty six pathway, way, but and we touched uh, at the surface of the genetic uh, abnormalities. Uh, what is the role of this, the, the, the gene encoding the L36 receptor antagonist that I, I was uh, uh, rapidly uh, uh, referring to um, in generalized pustular psoriasis? Well, thanks for the question, Hervé. And um, um, I know you share my uh, excitement ab uh, about the, the genetics of uh, GPP. Um, and uh, we both know that the, the pivotal year here um, in the disc in, in trying to find out actually what goes on in GPP, because um, it wasn't so long ago that we had no idea what the, the, the primary disease pathology of, of GPP is. But in 2011, there were two important papers published um, and uh, that showing that, that the IL-36 receptor antagonist was mutated in patients with GPP, um, leading to the uncontrolled IL-36 signaling that you've just uh, described um, as so important in the uh, as part of the immunopathology of, of GPP. Um, and um, I think what was also important about those studies looking back, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but different, two different genetic methods were, were used in either paper. So, it, it, so, and so different methodologies were used and also different ethnic backgrounds for the patient. So in other words, we know that the, this pathway is crucially important, not just in Caucasians, but in people from, from North African descent. And as we now know, um, it's important worldwide. And in fact, um, the disease is more common, I think, in, in the Far East uh, than, it, than it is in, in, in our area of the world. Um, so I think that's very important that, this is, uh, th that these genetic mutations are important globally um, and, and, just not, and, and not just um, in, in certain specific populations. Um, the, the role of the IL-36 uh, uh, receptor antagonist is very similar to the role of the IL-1 receptor antagonist um, and controls, and, and controls the, the pro-inflammatory cytokine, which you've been talking about. Um, called um, IL-36. Um, now, um, I think it's important to realize that not all cases of GPP are due to mutations in IL-36. Um, and indeed, um, other genes have been reported to be, uh, to have mutations in other genes have been uh, reported, including um, AP1S3, uh, CARD14, and MPO, Marlow uh, peroxidase. But what's absolutely fascinating is that even when you don't have the IL-36 genetic mutation causing the disease, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but IL-36 is raised with, 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 with these other genetic uh, uh, um, uh, causes, 
Um, and, and indeed, there is good biological evidence that, they, that all of them result in abnormal IL-36 signaling. Um, so that's really very exciting and goes back to the, the points you were making. And of course, now we know with the introduction of a, a new uh, therapeutic agent that specifically targets um, um, IL-36, um, called spezolimab, um, that it is effective um, in people who don't carry the IL-36 mutation. Again, which provides, so we now have biological and therapeutic um, evidence that IL-36 is, as you were saying, absolutely crucial um, to um, GPP. Um, now, there are other diseases um, um, that actually have physical signs that are very similar uh, to GPP, and the, uh, of which uh, the one that immediately springs to mind is AGEP, um, acute generalized exanthematous uh, pustulosis. Um, and we also know that in some cases of AGEP, um, mutations in IL-36 have been described, if, if I'm not wrong. And that tends to beg the question about whether we should start to think about reclassifying disease um, according to their uh, genetic and immunological basis rather than the clinical phenotype. But um, that's for the future. But I think we are on the cusp of really very exciting um, uh, times relating to this area of dermatology. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, re, um, that's very exciting. Um, and now, Kelsey, can you tell us uh, more about the, the, the neutrophilic uh, skin disorders um, other than GPP? Because um, we uh, presented GPP as part of the larger uh, spectrum, so-called neutrophilic dermatosis. Um, and to enter into this, um, this, the, this field, to tell one, one of the uh, uh, big challenges, big therapeutic uh, uh, challenges uh, in inflammatory dermatology, which is adrenalitis uh, superativa. Kelsey, can, can you tell us more about the role of IL-36 in this setting? Yes, of course. Thank you for the question, Erbe. Hydronite superativa, or HS, is a chronic inflammatory skin disease that originates in the hair follicle. It usually presents after puberty with recurrent painful abscesses and nodules. These are very often present in the axilla, the groin, but can also be present on the buttocks or underneath the breasts in women. In addition to that, later stages of the disease, patients tend to develop dermal tunnels, what we used to call sinus tracts or fistulas, and extensive scarring in those areas. The disease affects about 1% of the general population, and in the Western world, we tend to see that women are more affected than men, although in the Asian populations, we tend to see the difference the other way, with more men affected than women. So in this case, we are not speaking of a very rare disease, a rare orphan disease, which is uh, GPP. Uh, this is a, a highly prevalent disease. I, I would say it is highly, relatively highly prevalent, although the prevalence is really range from 0.3 to, to about 1.7%, depending on the method used. But I think it's safe to say that the prevalence, in, at least in the Western world, would be around 1%, yes. Thank you. However, there is a lot that we don't know about HS. A lot of the pathogenesis about HS is unknown. What we do know is that these inflammatory lesions are characterized by a mixed immune cell infiltrate, particularly neutrophils, something that we are talking about a lot today, but also dendritic cells, macrophages, and at later stages, a lot of T cells, also a lot of B cells and plasma cells. And this is accompanied by an upregulation of a plethora of cytokines such as IL-1-beta, TNF-alpha, IL-17, and IL-23. And this has been known for a long, long time. But what is a recent development is that we've also found that IL-36 may be implicated in the pathogenesis of HS. And we've previously talked about the agonistic and antagonistic um, parts of the IL-36 pathway. And that is also something that we found in HS. Because what we found in HS very recently is that there's actually a disbalance between the agonistic and antagonistic IL-36 cytokines. We particularly saw a significant overexpression of IL-36 alpha, beta, and gamma, so the agonistic cytokines, and a relative reduction in the antagonistic cytokines, so IL-36 receptor antagonists, but also other antagonistic uh, cytokines from the IL-1 family, such as IL-137 and IL-138. And we think that similar to what we've just discussed, there may be a linking role for this IL-36 imbalance between the keratinocyte response and the immune cell response in HS. And I'll tell you what our current hypothesis is, because it's still a hypothesis. 
we know that HS starts within the hair follicle with infundibular hyperplasia. This then results in cyst formation in the follicle and rupture of that cyst. The contents of that follicle enter the dermis and that, that is followed by um, interaction between the PAMS and DAMS with toloid receptor signaling which then activates the dendritic cells but also activates the keratinocytes to produce that IL-36. The IL-36 is then thought to interact with the dendritic cells who carry an IL-36 receptor to activate them to, um, to produce pro-inflammatory cytokines such as, for example, IL-12 and IL-23, which respectively promote the development of Th1 and Th17 T cells. These then produce uh, a plethora of cytokines such as IL-17, TNF-alpha and interferon gamma, which are really key HS-associated cytokines. And these attract and activate a lot of immune cells, such as the neutrophils, the T cells, but also the monocytes and dendritic cells. And in that way, really um, uh, enabling that heavy skin inflammation that we see in HS. On the other hand, these cytokines also stimulate the keratinocytes to proliferate, but to also excrete other cytokines and chemokines, which then again trigger an influx and activation of even more immune cells. And they also trigger the keratinocytes to proliferate subsequently also excreting more IL-36, which as you have already talked about, then um, acts on the keratinocytes again to create or to generate more proliferation in the keratinocytes. And we think that this stimulates the almost preatiform hyperplasia that we see between the follicles in HS, but it could potentially also aid the infundibular hyperplasia that we see as the primary event and the trigger of HS in that way kind of starting that whole cascade back up again. And that is what we currently hypothesize to be the role of IL-36 and IL-36 signaling in HS pathogenesis. So from the epithelial compartment, the IL-36 is released and get it back to the epithelial compartment, exerting some pro-inflammatory and hyperproliferative effects, right? Yeah. Jonathan, we spoke about uh, the emblematic, um, although very rare, uh, so-called disease variant of, of, of uh, Pustular psoriasis variant, which is GPP. What about the other less rare variant, which is mm. palmoplantar pustulosis? Um, that's a very good question, Hervé. Um, and um, I, I think um, uh, palmoplantar pustulosis, or PPP, um, is um, actually a much more difficult disease to unravel um, than, than GPP. Um, we know that a very small percentage um, of patients with uh, PPP have been associated with mutations in IL-36. We do know that IL-36 is overexpressed um, in patients with uh, PPP, um, but we also know that many other pathways are involved, perhaps um, a bit a bit like um, uh, hydrogenitis suppurativa. Um, and so although some of the clinical features are the same, I think the underlying mechanisms um, um, are much more complex um, and therefore, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, treatment opportunities um, in PPP turn out to be um, um, a little bit different than they are um, in GPP. Um, so um, I accept absolutely what you're saying about it being a more common disease, um, but I, I do think it's likely to be um, uh, have more different immunological pathways involved in it. Um, and therefore, perhaps striking one cytokine may not be as good as striking s several at once. But I, I guess we will see as, as time goes by. And can you tell us about the, uh, regarding this, the, the, the difference in terms of the, the, the frequency of the alpha 6 rn mutation, palmoplantar pustulosis? Uh, it, it's, it's lower than it, in GPP, it, right? That, that's right. I think it's much lower. I mean, I, 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 2 or 3 percent, yeah. order of magnitude. Uh, lower, and I think that's now been looked at in many studies in really quite large numbers of patients. Um, uh, and it, it is definitely a very different, and it's it's interesting that why a, a localized form of a pustular disease should have a well, it definitely has a very different pathogenetic background to the more generalized form, which, as you've described, is, I think we we know pretty clearly what's going on. But this does beg the question, really about, um, and it, again, it goes back to hydradenitis, suppurativa, and AGEP. You know, there are a whole range um, of other neutrophilic skin diseases out there, neutrophilic dermatoses, 
Um, and it seems very likely um, that, that IL-36 uh, may be involved in their pathophysiology as well. And that begs the question about whether targeting IL-36 therapeutically may be um, um, effective in that. I mean, I don't know if you, Hove, have any specific views of your own in that, but it certainly seems that as time goes by, we should start to investigate 30, IL-36 in many other skin diseases, pyoderma gangrenosum springs to mind, sweets disease springs to mind, and, and so on. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. especially as there, there are some cases, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are some cases of association of uh, pyoderma gangrenosum and other neutrophilic dermatoses then uh, with uh, HS in, in these patients. I mean, uh, yes, in but... sort of very inflammatory yeah. syndromes combining uh, both entities. Yes, that's absolutely true. There are multiple syndromes that combine both um, pyoderma gangrenosum and HS, but also acne or rheumatoid yeah. complaints. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and as you just rightfully said, I think IL-36 in these diseases may not be that crucial part of the puzzle, but it will definitely be one part of the puzzle that therapeutic yeah. targeting could be really helpful yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. So this is a link across different organs, yeah. right? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, this is great. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. So what we can conclude uh, from this uh, great dialogue across different uh, disease with different great experts uh, is uh, we can say that the concept of general spustular psoriasis is more emblematic, uh, is a sort of prototypic example of a group of diseases which are dominated by a clinically but also uh, biologically uh, a neutrophilic signature, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that, that that's key, uh, and and resulting of the deregulation of the uh, skin, but also the systemic um, innate immune system, and with downstream activation of the adaptive immune system. Uh, what we can say also is that um, eleven years on uh, after the uh, uh, first deciphering of the genetic architecture of the very rare. Um, a neutrophilic disease like which is GPP. Um, this led to the uh, advance and very rapid development of uh, therapeutic tools. In this case, monoclonal antibodies uh, developed against the L36 receptor to attempt to block the L36 driven inflammation. And it happened uh, lately that following phase one and phase two B of some monoclonal antibodies, there are two monoclonal antibodies which are currently developed. And one of these two antibodies, namely spesalimab, has just been uh, approved by the Food and Drug Administration in the North America um, in a moderate to severe uh, generalized pustular psoriasis, showing that it starts with the deciphering of the pathogenesis um, to come to tailored um, therapies. Um, and this is the first drug to be uh, specifically approved in GPP um, outside, outside uh, Japan. And so um, there is clear evidence, of course, uh, uh, based on this example, that deregulated IL-36 pathway uh, in HS uh, and other neutrophilic disease. We heard a lot from, from uh, UKLC that there is um, more than preliminary evidence that um, uh, at least uh, part of HS inflammation is driven by IL-36 uh, deregulation, but also in other neutrophilic uh, skin and extracutaneous disease. Um, we heard, talked about pyoderma gangrenosum um, and uh, in the extracutaneous field, uh, inflammatory bowel disease is currently yeah. tackled yeah. Uh, by uh, IL-36 uh, receptor inhibitor well, I think this great discussion has to uh, come to an end. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you, Kelsey, uh, to thank you, uh, Jonathan, thank for this you, great panel discussion. Um, I, I personally uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, this was a really uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, advances that will uh, uh, benefit for the patients. They already do, um, and this is uh, great to know. I would also like to uh, thank you uh, for participating in this activity. Please continue on to uh, answer the questions that follow and please complete the evaluation. We value your evaluation and of course, we value your attendance. Thank you. This program was presented by Medscape Education Global.